Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, I am very sorry that I cannot join you for this exciting conference. The reason is that it collides with the 70th anniversary celebrations of the Davis Center at Harvard, which is my second academic home and a place where I am center associate and on the advisory board, so I could impossibly miss the celebration. But in lieu of that, I am happy to say hello to you from my previous engagement where I'm taping that from Indonesia, which is, of course, the largest Muslim country in the world, the largest Muslim majority country, and also one of the three large democracies on earth. Why do we deal, other than in public administration history, with non-Western PA? Well, if there is not one global best practice of public administration, but if this is so, that what we call global public administration is really global Western administration, even really Western administration, and not even really Western administration, but Anglo-American administration, and perhaps even American administration, then both intellectually and practically, it would be very interesting to have competing models these competing models would make public administration and public administration reforms better because you could better make something functional where you are. You could upgrade countries or academic systems according to how they have developed and how they scaffold the structure of life in these countries. Now, if this is the case, and if we are looking about contemporary relevance, if we want to make our point hard, if we want to sharpen it, which we should if we have such an argument that a lot of people might not like, then it would be interesting to look at those systems that really could compete with the global Western one, that have a long tradition over centuries, that have a sophisticated history, that um, are still in practice today, not only via values, but also via institutions. And although this is controversial, I think that uh, the three paradigms, or even the two and a half, that can be competition to the global Western system would be the Confucian system, which certainly is rising as we speak again and again. And you know that the Confucian countries are some of the most successful ones by almost all indicators. That is, for the half, a the Buddhist level, and the, why the Buddhist level is so interesting is because it's readily accessible for Western scholars. It is something that they intuitively like. But then the second full competitive um, PA paradigm would be Islamic PA. Islamic PA is also interesting because it is the only alternative project of public administration if we agree that it is a paradigm that is at a direct contact with the Western tradition. There was never a border between a Western country and a Confucian country. But there have been many inroads of Islam into the first world, if you so want to call it, of Europe. From the southwest, where you are now, from the south, Sicily, None of these institutions seem to have survived as efficient as they were. And then from the southeast, via the Ottoman Empire, a half a thousand years of highly sophisticated, sometimes proto, sometimes uber Weberian bureaucratic structure of sophisticated finance solutions, certainly a very, very interesting solution. Now, some of these developments are similar in Islamic PA, especially in Ottoman PA, to Western ones. But if this is so, if we want to modernize, if we want to change, if we want to reform, isn't it better in such countries to do that on that background? And not by saying that Woodrow Wilson said so, but that the Caliph Umar said so. Isn't that the better way of how to go about it? And doesn't it give us especially because there is a history of Islam as the other in European development to validate the Muslim experience, to validate the contribution of Muslim cultures to the general culture of Europe. For us, that sounds fairly trivial. 
But as you know, this is something that is not always uncontested. And so the positive, the interesting, the specific, however, contribution of Islam to public administration is particularly interesting. Now, in Europe, we see relatively little of that legacy in the four Muslim-majority countries that we in Europe have. Uh, but it is uh, generally, in the House of Islam, a very, very interesting program that not everybody appreciates it, but that certainly is there. And this is something that is one of these beautiful research projects that even if they fail, are profitable because they allow us, just as a mental exercise, to step out of what we think is actually the only solution, the unique solution, and we are reflecting on our own heritage in such a way as that we can say, that's not natural, that's not normal, but that is one way of how to address it, and it allows us to specifically address what is, if you will, European or Western. Notice that I'm not saying Christian, although that legacy is, of course, there, Judeo-Christian in a larger perspective, just like the Islamic perspective is meant here in a cultural sense as an extremely important variable of civilization, primarily speaking. So we find these Islamic institutions also in not religiously, primarily Islamic countries. If this is successful, if we can identify such paradigms, not only by values, but by institutions, it gives us both this intellectual possibility of really enriching our understanding of what public administration is like and the chance to upgrade and modernize systems that might be resistant to reforms just because they are recommended from a global Western perspective. So in that sense, we are having at this meeting, as well as generally when dealing with NWPA or Islamic PA, a win-win situation in the sense that even if we fail, we win by advancing intellectually. But if we win, we may have better PA and a better understanding of both other systems and of ours. That is what I would like to say in all brevity. I am sure that the discussion of uh, the Islamic paradigm of PA is in extremely good hands with you. And I am very much looking forward to later read and hear about the documentation of this conference. Once again, I'm sorry not to be there, and I wish you all the best and a successful conference. Thank you very much.